correlative studies in humans, a handful showing more sexually active men tend to have higher testosterone levels. And for what it's worth, a number of studies have documented a dramatic drop in testosterone levels in men right around the time that they become uh, fathers. Okay, so figure that one out. Also an increase in vasopressin levels at that time. You know how to interpret this one by now. So we've got testosterone and higher levels of male sexual behavior going hand in hand. Are we looking at any causality here? First off, we already know about one piece of causality, which was the other day, sexual behavior in men, in males, increases testosterone levels. So that's one reason why they may go hand in hand. In that scenario, testosterone has nothing to do with increasing the likelihood of the behavior. So does testosterone actually have a causal role in increasing the likelihood of male sexual behavior? And the answer is yes. And how do you show it? With the most simple classic way of doing something in an endocrine study, which is uh, get rid of the guy's testosterone. And you castrate the male, your rodent male, your non-human primate male, and what you see is there is a big drop in levels of sexual behavior. And this could range from male level lever pressing to get access to a female, to courtship displays, to extent of pomading of hair or something in the right neighborhoods. And whatever the measure is, this is when normal testosterone levels are on board. And this is, after castration, a very, very dramatic drop. Now to fulfill the second you know, ironclad requirement in endocrinology, the last thing you need to do now is, after the subtraction experiment, to do a replacement one. Artificially give back the normal levels to the castrated individual, and levels of sexual behavior go back to there. Whoa, okay, that proves it. We have a causal relationship here. Not so fast. First thing to note, which is 0% testosterone and sexual behavior goes way, way down, it doesn't go to zero. In every species looked at, starting with the embarrassing sexual behavior of everyone's pet dogs when they were six years old, even after being neutered, what you see is there's a level of residual sexual behavior. Rodents, dogs, primates, including humans. This is a critical point. How much residual sexual behavior is there after castration? The more sexual experience before castration, the more there is going to be retained afterward. In other words, on a certain like totally artificial level, this amount of sexual behavior is being driven by testosterone. This amount, which persists here, is being driven by social experience. It's got nothing to do with the hormones. Yes, this is ridiculous dichotomizing into this, but the fact that it doesn't go to zero and the fact that the more sexual experience pre-castration, the more residual behavior, this is a vote for just how much of a role social experience, social conditioning plays. Next thing that takes away from the, yes, it's all caused by testosterone. Now you do an elaboration on the study. You castrate a male, and now, instead of replacing with 100% of normal levels, you give 10% of normal levels. Or you give 200% of normal levels. And what do you wind up seeing? If testosterone plays a strictly causative role, even in this range, you are going to get something, this is going to be lower than 100%, and this is going to be higher. That's not what you see. Instead, it is something like that you get roughly the same reinstatement of sexual behavior with when you replace return testosterone levels over anything roughly approximating the normal physiological range. What does that tell you? The brain circuits we learned about the other day involved in sexual motivation, it requires testosterone around to work fully, not entirely, but to work fully, but those brain regions are not really all that concerned with the exact level of testosterone. Rough approximation of normal, rough approximation of normal has the exact same effect. 
If you were seeing a tight relationship in a male between the amount of sexual behavior and testosterone levels, it's not because every little smidgen bit of more testosterone is going to drive more se sexual behavior. It's because every little additional smidgen of behavior is going to drive higher testosterone levels. So we've got this really important observation. Yes, testosterone is needed in species after species, including humans, for the normal range of sexual behavior. Just as importantly, castration never drops it down to zero, the more social experience, that whole song and dance. And very importantly as well, the system is not sensitive to little differences in testosterone levels. Stating that a different way, if some guy has 1.5% more testosterone on board than the guy sitting next to him or than he had last week, is that going to mean he is going to be more sexually motivated, more aroused? No, not at all. Within the normal range, the system doesn't distinguish it. The relevant brain regions are sensitive to testosterone and require it, but do not care a whole lot about the levels. One exception, which is if you, instead of, say, 200%, push testosterone levels like 1,000%, tenfold higher than normal, this is supra physiological, which means it's out of the normal range, which means no bodies normally generate those sorts of levels, put it up in that range and you will get an increase in sexual behavior and sexual arousal. When do you see this? The idiots who go and abuse anabolic steroids for their weightlifting or whatever, people doing that are not pushing up their testosterone levels into the higher range of what human bodies gen can generate. They are pushing it way above the normal range. In that range, you do see an increase in sexual proceptivity. In a week or so, what we will see is the exact same story. It will be the exact same chart here when asking the question, what does testosterone have to do with aggression? And what you'll see is the exact same conclusions. What are we beginning to see here? That testosterone is not playing a strictly causative role. It is playing one of the words that should be becoming repetitive here and clearly really important. Testosterone is playing a modulatory role. What testosterone does is sensitize you towards stimuli that are evocative of sexual arousal, it lowers the threshold. And that could be shown in all sorts of studies, but where it's most clear cut is in this case. Does testosterone cause the sexual behavior? No, but when it is on board, it facilitates it, it modulates it. Theme again and again and again.